one more time Romans chapter 8 verse 19 here we go the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God the Lord created man on the sixth day and on the seventh day the Lord says he took rest we are going back to Genesis now but I want to turn there just give it to you Je the Lord God Almighty creates everything and then he brings a man so in other words you know, the creation has eagerly waited for Adam to show up and so when Adam showed up I believe that the whole of creation shouted a victory shout because it is now ready to fulfill its purpose so the purpose of creation is to satisfy man and assign man to a position where he in turn can serve his master his creator who's God himself and so creation has been waiting for man to show up and when man showed up they said wow you know and I'm using my own words to say that but unfortunately man sinned and he fell short of the glory of God but again after the redemption story when Jesus came in and he redeemed the mankind and he was not restored back to Adamic position you see when you and I right now we are redeemed we are not in the position of Adam no 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 we have been lifted much higher than Adam the Bible makes it very clear in the book of Psalm chapter 8 it says we are made a little lower and the Bible says angels in that chapter I believe it's verse 2 or somewhere there but the actual translation to that word angels is not angels it's Elohim Elohim is God the Father Son and the Holy Spirit and we were created I mean just maybe a notch below the Trinity the Godhead and I'm not saying we are God I'm saying we are children of God created by God and we hold that esteemed position so in redemption we were restored back not just to Adamic innocence but we were lifted up and the book of Ephesians is the, the Paul the writer he says you know what the position that you're in right now is you're seated with Christ in the heavenly places so I want you to understand when we were redeemed back we didn't get back to Adam's position no we took on a very high position and that's seated with Christ and therefore we are seated at his table we are royalty I mean that's a mouthful by itself I'm not saying we are gods I'm saying we are seated with Christ we are seated with in the heavenly places that's what the book of Ephesians says to us very clear we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places and that's a place for us to shout a hallelujah and that's my spiritual position yes my body is still on this ground I know this is still on this earth but praise God my spirit man and God we are we are intertwined together the Bible says he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him oh praise God and that's a lot of stuff right there man has come into this earth with a purpose and that purpose is primarily important you know we're not just come here to just to sing hallelujahs and praise the Lord and leave no we have come with an inbuilt assignment you see the creation as an assignment is to welcome the, the 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 pinnacle of God's creation which is you and me so that they assist us in whatever we are called to do so in other words there is a very major uh, assignment on your life and the reason why we are here is to complete that God-given mandate and assignment and that's another subject by itself but what I want to share with you here is that the, the creation the Bible says eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God now I want you to understand what do you mean by the word creation what do you mean is it just the plants the trees and things like that no I want you to begin to see there's something more important uh, in it when the word creation is used the word creation is a, is a Greek word called uh, it's Christus I hope I'm saying it right K-T-I-S-I-S -I -S. it talks about establishing it talks about building the word their creation is, is everything which is assigned if you would fulfill God's purpose I think that's the safest way for me to explain it now anything around you is waiting that you will manifest yourself and remember this this is powerful 
because the Bible says the, the creation is number one waiting for you. I mentioned that, but it's not waiting for children. It is waiting for sons. And the word sons is very important. It is H-U-I-O-S. All right. It's actually the translation for the word kinship, kinsman, powerful. When creation is waiting to welcome you, creation is looking for the son's version, not the child's version. The creation is not waiting for children. Creation is waiting of the, waiting for the revealing of the sons. In other words, the word revealing is, 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 is layer, unwrapping layer by layer. And the revelation is, first of all, is, is my understanding with the word, getting the word in my spirit man to come to a position to say, you know what, I'm no longer a child, I'm an adult in the spirit. This is not a matter of age, my friend. It's not a matter of age, it's a matter of revelation thing. I hope I'm making sense here. So the question we need to ask ourselves now, am I a child, immature, or am I an adult? So today make up your mind, I am an adult. I am mature, I am strong. And it's not just saying it with your lips, but I believe it's the understanding of the episode. Today, you know what? We need to go to the episodes, visit it more and more, and just believe what it says. And the Bible talks about so many references to talking about who we are, and who we really are in Christ. And that's maybe some other time. But for now, I want to just lay this and lay it as best as I can. That creation is waiting for you and not for this version of you if you are an infant or a child. No, no, no. Not for that version. Creation is waiting for sons. And that's very, very important. And revealing the Bible says that the sons of God, and by the way, there's no male, no female here. It's for all of us who are mature. And, and the Bible says, let me just now, now watch this. As I'm going to read it in, in the home, you'll get the picture straight. Now, the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. We pray that I will manifest a sonship version of myself. And that's going to be a declaration. I am going to manifest the sonship version of myself. This is a call to grow. I mean, no more children, no more infants. No, we need to grow maturity and once that maturity comes creation reveals itself to us so as i made a mention i want to just go to the book of genesis chapter 7 and and and, and this is beautiful in the book of genesis chapter 7 we know the story of noah let's pick it up from verse number 13. Uh, it mentions noah and noah's sons shem ham and japheth noah's wife and three wives of his sons with them entered the ark. God gives Noah a blueprint and tells Noah, please go ahead with this ark. Now, I'm sure that all of us know that this they've never seen an ark before. There was never a template of an ark before. Uh, they did not even know what the ark could really do. On top of this, there was no rain. But the man heard God. And I, uh, please, this is important. Because every single one of us have an assignment like this. And so for us personally, our assignment is like Noah's assignment of building an ark. Now, it has to be so mammoth. It has to be so huge. If it wasn't for God in the picture, you won't be able to do nothing. That's, that's God. I'm telling you, most likely if there's something that you heard and you think it is God, and it's easy for us to do. Oh man, most likely it's not even God. You know why? I have seen throughout scripture and in the lives of great men of God, God asks you to do something practically impossible. And that's what I, it's all about. If God told you something, it must be mind boggling, mind blowing, no precedent before this. I mean, it should shock the daylights out of you. And I'm telling you, that's the case. Praise God, you heard God. But if there's something that you can do with your own strength, most likely it's not God. But in this case, Noah had to prepare that mega ark, right? The size of three or four football fields. Mega ark, 
with just a handful of manpower because the rest of the world was mocking him and laughing at him. And so I'm going to tell you this straight away. God has given you an assignment. Have you found your assignment? Because this is where creation steps in. Please understand this. Creation steps in right there. And by the way, just for us to understand, you know, just imagine the, the whole ark was made of wood, right? And so where did the wood come from? It came from creation. It came from the, from the trees. You see, there's a, there's a sink between creation and man and that alignment for fulfilling God's purposes through man. So when I said creation, I'm not just referring to the trees, now. I'm referring to systems. I'm referring to policies. I'm referring to rules. I'm referring to regulation. I'm referring to angelic hosts aligning themselves so that you can manifest as the Son of God to fulfill His mandate. His kingdom has to operate in and through our life. And that's what Jesus taught us to pray. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on this earth. Now who is the via? It is via me. I am the conduit through which God is going to do something. Oh, praise God. Well, coming back to the story here. The Bible says, Shem, Ham, Japheth, and Noah's wife, and all of these, the family members. The Bible says they entered the ark. Now listen to me. Whatever vision God gave Noah to build this mega structure, this mega ark itself was their safe haven. And I'm telling you, if God gave you a vision, if God gave you a dream, if God gave you something tangible, that is going to be your safe haven. Because when the rain came, torrential rain came, and the springs from the under under the seas opened up and it, it, it started pouring from, from all sides, their safe haven was that vision which God gave Noah. Am I making sense? Today, if I'm serving the Lord in a full-time ministry capacity and I'm teaching and I'm preaching and I'm doing all, this, all these kind of things, this is what the Lord wanted me to build for Him. And because I built it for Him and this itself, the ministry I'm doing for Jesus Christ is my boat, is my ark, it's my safe haven, my protection, it's my providence, it's everything that I have. I hope I'm making sense here. If you want to be provided for, finish what God wanted you to do. Your vision will bring your provision. Oh, hallelujah. We've been saying, God, supply all my need. But the Lord is looking for that vision. Has He given you a vision? I'm sure He has. Have you fulfilled the vision? When you fulfill the vision, the mission and the vision, both together, that's where you get your provision. That's the fact of the matter. And when Noah, finished it, that became a safe heaven. Now listen to me. They go into the ark, and the Bible says in verse 14, listen, they and every beast after its kind, all cattle after their kind, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth after its kind, and every bird after its kind, every bird of every sort. Now listen to me, this, I mean, time will fail me, and words would fail me to even tell you the different type of animals and insects and whatever not which creeps, which climbs, which flies and the Bible says all of this had to enter the ark. See? Now, now is it the responsibility of Noah to catch them and bring them and drop them in the ark? No. The Bible says in verse 15, and they went into the ark to Noah. Listen very carefully. And they went into the ark to Noah, two by two, all of all flesh, which is the which is the breath of life. Now, because Noah is on divine assignment, the Bible says all these animals, yes, they went into the ark. We've seen that from Sunday school days. Yes, it's all going into the ark. These tall giraffes to the smaller animal. Yet they're going to the ark. But you know what the Bible says? They went into the ark to Noah. They went to Noah. If perhaps if Noah was standing on the land in front of that mega ark, he would have come to him and stopped right there. Listen to me. He is the center of attraction. Now he was the one who was like a magnet drawing them because he had a divine mandate. Creation was waiting for him to manifest. 
the animals came to Noah. Noah was probably in the ark. That's why the animals went into the ark. But the Bible says they went to Noah. Oh, hallelujah. Today, you know what? There are things waiting to come to you. You're like a spiritual magnet. You're, you're, you're attracting things in your life. Why? Because of the of the miss of the of the great mission that God has called you for. I hope you understand that. You see, the reason why things need to come to you is because you're on this you're, you're on divine assignment. Build his kingdom. No building my kingdom. We're not building our ministry. We're not here to build our our stuff. We're not here for all those things. No. Our main mandate is to build the kingdom of the Lord. And because we build the kingdom of the Lord, things that you need are going to come to you. Your provision is going to come to you because I want divine assignment. Oh, hallelujah. I hope I'm making sense here. So the Lord called me out from working with Malaysian Airlines as their uh, airport manager. He said, step out into full-time ministry. You know, that was uh, Noah's art moment. Because now the Lord is calling me out. So I stepped out from the secular job into serving the Lord on a full-time basis. What am I done? I've stepped out in alignment to what God wants me to do. And so I attract things which is in line of my ministry to bless the body of Christ. And, and that's my assignment, my provision, my protection, and my peace. Everything I look for is embedded inside that. And therefore, this is holy ground. What I'm doing is holy. It's a holy ground. And I've been called for such a time like this. I'm aware of that. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not making sense to you, my brother, my sister. See, get into the line. Get in alignment. And things will start aligning for you. I can tell you today, Noah had a blueprint. God, you said, you are, I, I've listened to you. I've heard your voice. I've done all these things. I am ready. And therefore, God says, okay, creation begins to align. Literally, creation. The Bible says two by two. Imagine the various numerous types of birds and animals and creeping stuff. I mean, if Noah were to go behind each one of them and draw them in, it would have probably cost him a few years from that point of time. But this the Lord says, no. You, are, you stand where you are. Things will come to you. Today, I want to declare in the name of Jesus. Finances are your issue. Stand in the position of your vision and you attract provision. Amen. If you need health and healing of your body, just tell the Lord, God, I put myself in a place that I will serve you. Please, I believe you are my healer. Begin to call on the Lord and give him an assignment. Tell the Lord, God, I am ready to serve you. You begin to tell the Lord. You know what? That's what Hannah did. Hannah in the Old Testament. She waited for a child. No child came through. Then she said, you know what, Lord, let's make a deal here. The child you're going to give me, I'm going to give him back to you. She closed the circuit and when she did that Samuel was born and I'm sure as she promised the Lord she gave him back to serve the Lord and he was one of the greatest of, of the prophets uh, who served the Lord during his time and age I mean, am I making sense to you if you notice the book of Luke's gospel chapter number five again you will you notice the same operation happening out there there the Bible says and Peter he stood, he, he went into the boat and the, the Bible says he, he, and the Lord says to Peter, Peter, I mean, uh, what's up, what's happening? He says, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. This refers to a place where, you know, we use our own efforts to get things done. I mean, using our own, you know, sweat and, and our strategies and things like that. And the, and the Lord says, okay, I mean, now that you've learned the lesson by, by catching nothing, and spending the whole night waste, wasting your time and your energy and all that. He says, now just throw this on the other side. All right. And then you're going to get your fish. Now, listen, the, this interesting part is when Peter never questioned the Lord. You know, technically Peter could have said, excuse me, sir, you are talking to a seasoned fisherman. This is not the time to throw our nets. And by the way, I understand you are a carpenter. You know, a carpenter is suggesting to a fisherman how to fish. That's not the way it works. But Peter said, Lord, something so important. He says, at your word, at your word, I will let down the net. Today, God is calling 
you to obey implicitly, understand the call of God on your life. And the Bible says when they did that, they caught a great number of fish and the nets were breaking. Net was breaking. It was a record breaking catch of fish that day. Why? He came to the revelation. He says, I cannot question King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So he began to catch a great catch. Now listen very carefully. The fish in the sea, they were destined to go and fall in that net. Did you know what I said? When the fish were swimming in another direction and they hear this voice, your assignment is to go and drop in the net. Now all the fish get together and say, excuse me, let's finish our mandate. What's our mandate? The voice beckons us, the Creator's voice. So the Creator aligned itself to the Creator because it had to align to the voice of a man who stood in his position and he was the magnet by which the fish were attracted to. So Peter came back with a shout of praise and a hallelujah in his lips and a heart filled with awe and wonder to the amazing things what the Lord has done. My brother, my sister, manifest yourself as a son. Creation is waiting for you. That job is waiting for you. That opportunity is waiting for you. That destiny is waiting for you. That healing is waiting for you. That promotion is waiting for you. That breakthrough is waiting for you. That relationship that which is stunned bitter is going to become sweet again and that's waiting for you. I'm here to tell you in the name of Jesus, you need to assign yourself to growing up and you will see God work because creation is waiting for you to reveal yourself. Not as a baby, not as an infant, not as a child, but as the sons of God. Are you ready? If you say you're ready, say, Holy Spirit, I am ready to grow to the place where you want me to grow. Open my eyes of understanding. And once that happens, creation will rush to your aid and fulfill everything the Lord wants us to do. So where I say, God, this is my ministry. This is my heart. This is your work. This is what you entrusted me with. So things will begin to happen. You can stand in that place. May the Lord bless these words, cause you to walk in that place. And I'm going to believe that you're going to send your testimonies as to what the Lord has done. Lord, which bless you.